okay. We're back on shift inside the ambulance. It's on. It's on. Let's go! Ah. With more medical emergencies. Mate, ah. is that a little bit better now? And more cameras. Try to turn you on. Yes, turn me <laughs> on, girl, turn me on. We're taking you back to the heart of the action. Sharp scratch of code wood. There are some new faces. This could potentially be quite hazardous. <laughs> and some old friends. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> Body-mounted cameras record every moment. Nice and slow. To show you what goes on behind closed doors. Caroline, can you hear me, sweet? Okay, that is a chunk. You'll be on the front line with the paramedics from the West Midlands Ambulance Service. I reckon you could do this job, you know. Take a big deep breath and hold it for me. <laughs> Never a wasted moment when I'm being paid by the ambulance service. As they deal with 3,000 emergency calls each day. There's nothing to worry about. That's not too bad, Petal, is it? No. You were eager to come into the world, weren't you, Chicky? Step inside the ambulance. I love this job. If I could be any animal, I would be... Do you know, I really don't know. Hmm. Well, I've been compared to a bear recently. Do you know what? My favourite animal is a snow leopard. Quite like one. They've got one in Dudley Zoo, haven't they? I reckon you'd be a tortoise. I'd like to be a tortoise, man. They just, like, move slow, carry the house on their back. I think I'd have to be a koala bear. Small people just want to pick you up and cuddle you, and they're extremely slow moving. You want to be a sloth, so it would suit me. It's coming towards the end of a busy 12 hour shift for Simon Little and Michelle McNulty. Updated assignment. Stop being monking. Updated assignment. A new job is just in. A 30-year-old female with learning difficulties is having a seizure at a college. Community college. Here we are. They're waiting for us. I see them. It's a Category 1 call, and they get there in just three minutes. Their body-worn cameras capture everything. What's been going on, then? Yeah. She felt funny, and then she wanted to talk. Yeah, yeah, she knew yeah. she could have seen her. She got on the floor. Yeah, she knows when they're coming on. Yeah. She knew she was going to have one, so she lay on the floor and she went right into a seizure. Right. What's her name? Jodie. Jodie. 30-year-old Jodie was taking part in a creative art class when the seizure began. You OK? Another one's coming on. Okay. Jody was born with epilepsy and has a couple of seizures a month. Her support worker Paige called 999 as Jody had two seizures one after the other, which is unusual for her. Jody. What's your name? Simon. Simon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Quick blood test. This might hurt. One, two, three. Oh. I, I oh. warned you. <laughs> With Jodie feeling like she's going to fit again, Simon needs to do a series of checks to get a full picture of what's going on. I'm just doing your temperature, going in your ear, OK? Have you felt OK today? Um, no. What's been different today? Did you have any pain anywhere? No. When did you come back? Where did you go on holiday? We went to Spain. Did you? Lovely. What can you feel happening again? 
Something's flashing. Where's it flashing? In the corner of your eye. Is my face a different colour? Yeah. It goes blurry. Right? Okay. And it was just shaking or tonic clonic? Not the, the major jerky, just the small jerky. How long was this episode? Like three and a half minutes. Three and a half minutes. A tonic clonic seizure is a big fit. The whole body goes rigid and starts shaking uh, uncontrollably. The muscles in your body aren't able to, to function properly. Your lungs, if they can't contract and relax, then your body's not going to get enough air. And for a prolonged period of time, that could lead to death. How are you feeling? You're OK? It doesn't look like Jodie's going to have a third full-blown seizure. However, she's still not feeling right. Funny green face you have now. Fans. <laughs> it's been like a witch. And yellow arms. And the pupils back to normal. Not yet. But yeah. No, that's why I keep staring at you. Because <laughs> we don't take everyone to hospital. We just check that everyone's OK, all right? Would you like to go and have a sit on the sofa? A bit more comfortable than the floor, isn't it? Give us an hand. Right, which chair would you like? There's a sofa, there's an armchair. It is quite common for someone to uh, get an injury from a seizure. Luckily, Jodie does have that sensation. She's able to, you know, sense it. I was comfortable that there was nothing else going on, uh, that it was just purely... It was a uh, epilepsy. 25 minutes later, Jodie appears relaxed and Simon's health checks have all come back as normal. Is this a normal self to you? Yeah. Do you know what you need? Go and get in the car, head back home, and on the way, someone might just get, go to the shop and get you an ice cream. I was just going to say the same thing. Are you on tomorrow? We yeah. are. Dream team. After careful observation, Simon and Michelle are happy that Jodie's well enough to go home and rest. There you go. That's really good, <laughs> Andrew. That's better than mine. <laughs> My hint is awful compared to that. No worries. Take care. It was lovely meeting you. All right. <coughs> Take care. On Saturday, guess where I was? Where? At the tattoo parlour. Never. I didn't have a tattoo. <laughs> I was like, what? No, I didn't have a but I had um, a belly button read on. You never did. Yep. I was a brave girl. Why have you done that? Because I've wanted it redone for a while, but just not brave enough to do it. Um, I did by myself. The West Midlands Ambulance Service averages 3,000 call-outs a day, making every shift a busy one. Category 1. 999 mode activated. Joe Wilson and Sam Grosvenor have just had a new job come in. And it's uh, breathing problems in an under five-year-old. A small child is struggling to breathe, and her panicked parents have called 999. They arrive at the house in just five minutes. Hello. 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 All right. How are we doing? They find two-year-old Elishba lying on the sofa, showing signs of respiratory distress. What's happened then? She's got her hand and then her arm. She breathed out her breathing has gone worse. Elishba's struggled to breathe all day, but now it's got to a stage where she's fighting for every breath. Sorry, Doc. Get her on her nib straight away. She diagnosed asthma. 
Sorry. Joe can see Elishba is straining with every muscle to take a breath. If they're using accessory muscles in order to breathe, then my alert level sort of rises. It tells me that there's a serious breathing problem, that their body is utilising every muscle in order to get the maximum amount of oxygen into their lungs that they possibly can. She's obviously still struggling a bit. She's, like, breathing quite fast, say. So I think it's better safe than sorry. We need to pop her up to the hospital, all right? But before they can even move her, they need to help her to breathe. You gonna pop this on for me, Chuck? Joe gives her a nebulizer. Pop this on then. Good girl. Breathe that in. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the nebulizer turns liquid medicine into a mist so that it can get to Elishba's lungs more effectively and open up her airways quickly. So she's not allergic to anything. She's on Ventolin. Is that the only inhaler she has? Just a beclometazone. Yeah. And how long has she been having this uh, asthma for? Oh, since morning. Since this morning. So, so we say sort of 12 hours then? Yeah. Just 18 minutes after arriving at the house, Joe and Sam get their young patient inside the ambulance. Mum, you can sit there, cos that's closest to, uh, to little one. Well, well, yeah, when we're ready, mate, let's make a move. Yeah, make a move now. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow is Elishba's third birthday, but for now, the celebrations are on hold. She's going to probably need some, like, steroid treatment anyway, cos she's had these asthma attacks that, you've, that have, like, failed to rectify themselves. It's not only really the opportunity to have steroids. Really? Well, hopefully this time, you know, one, you know, the one set of steroids should be enough to... to help her repair enough to fight it off if she has another episode. Mum Shazia suffers from asthma herself. Alishba has had a number of attacks in the past few weeks, but none as serious or as prolonged as today's. Are you struggling to breathe again? Just a few minutes into the journey, she starts wheezing badly. What I've given before works on her, like, small to medium airways. This one works on the larger airway, so it should uh, all help in the long run, eh, mate? All help in the long run. Jo needs to get her breathing under control. Do you like this? This one's nice, this one. It tastes like sweets. Nom, 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 nom. Yeah, you try it for me. There we go. Just two minutes later, they arrive at hospital. Mommy, come here. I worried you about that job. Initially, I was quite worried. Listening to her chest and that, like, she was, like, really wheezy all over. Thankfully, she responded really well to the subutamol, so it went from her being big sick to little sick in quite a, a small period of time. Speak to you soon, my dear. Thank you. <laughs> Come on. No! <laughs> You didn't know I used to be a professional racing driver. No? <laughs> On to the next, guys. I say, what do you do? Let's get this wagon rolling, shall we? Yay! <laughs> Can you not make me laugh? Oh, I'm not so much today. I've got a bang in the night. Sorry about that. It's hazard to work with me. Hashtag dream team. Hashtag dream team. Oof. It's Monday afternoon. You want your glasses? No, they're just for show, aren't they? No. 
Ow. Ow. Simon Little and Michelle McNulty have been on shift for five hours. They've just been assigned another job. Oh, it's, it's on. Name. It's on outside. And it's not categorised yet. Dad of three, Simon, has been a paramedic for two years. It's not just me that sees this random person stood in the middle of the road. That's what crossings are for, love. <laughs> Former RAF officer Michelle is about to complete her paramedic training. A fella between his 70s and 80s uh, collapsed in the street and he's now confused. Maybe he's drunk. It takes the ambulance crew just eight minutes to arrive and find their patient. Murray. Murray. Is it you, sir, that we've come to see? What do you mean, is it me? <laughs> Nothing the matter with me. Oh, good. I don't do anything as well as I know. Mick was found by his neighbour, Patricia. We found him in the road. In the road? On the road? In the road. Mick was on his way to the shops when he collapsed in the street. What were you doing? I'm going to check your blood pressure. Waiting for the bus. Does the bus he come down in, here? Lives in that yeah. flat up there. Do you live on your own? Yeah. What was the last thing you remember then, Mick? Waiting for the bus. <laughs> Just waiting for the bus. Waiting for the bus. I wanted some milk from down the village, then I. Do you normally have high blood pressure? I have had. I had a TIA last year, didn't I? Right. Was it high when you had the TIA? No. A TIA is a transient ischemic attack, otherwise known as a mini-stroke. It's caused when blood flow to part of the brain is temporarily disrupted. They're worried Mick could have another. Do you feel like you've injured yourself anywhere, Mick? OK. Do you remember falling over? Keep saying no. Are you normally forgetful? No. No. Do you want to come and sit on our ambulance? It's a bit cooler. Wow. You've had an unexplained collapse and your blood pressure's quite high. There's a possibility you could have had a TIA again. Mick used to be in the RAF. He's a very active 78-year-old, but a rather reluctant patient. Do you pop your feet up? Have a little rest for me. I'm just going to put the sides up. It's a good job my partner's not there. She'll be having a baby. Ah, oh, dear. <laughs> I don't think I was unconscious. You weren't. Um, you just fell. I'm just going to put some stickers on your chest to check your heart's OK. I've had that, I've had that before, yes. Oh, yeah, bet. It's all, it's all been gone through before. <laughs> Although Mick doesn't think he's had another minor stroke, Michelle can't rule it out. You feel weak or numb down one side or anything? No. No. Everything no, I, I feels did, okay. but I had it last year. Yeah. Despite being found collapsed in the road, Mick has a very relaxed approach to his health. So you've had a TIA. Yeah. You've got epilepsy. Yeah. Any other conditions that we need to be aware of? I had cancer throughout cancer. <laughs> okay. I'm in remission from that. Very unexplained, this collapse. I don't know whether I really collapsed or not. I mean, usually I'm not, but something like that. Well, I think it's best we pop you up to the hospital, get you checked out. Oh, no. I've got to go through all that in your mess. Your blood pressure was quite high when we got here. It was 183 over 104. And it could be, could be an indication that you've had another TIA. We don't know. But that's up to the hospital to roll that out. I think, given your history with it, be best to go and get checked out. Now, did you meet your lovely lady? Oh, on the internet. It's <laughs> <laughs> the way forward. Are you happy to go? Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm not. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> we'll pick up some milk on the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I met my partner. Was it on the internet? Yeah. <laughs> you can't just go out and meet someone these days. No. No. I was just going to go off the, the net, actually. It was funny. Yeah. But this photograph came up and I thought, oh, she's nice. Aww. <laughs>
And how old is she then? Is the... She's... I'm a toy boy. You're a toy boy? <laughs> All right. She's 81, she is. Oh, wow. And when did you meet her? Two years ago, February. Oh, lovely. It's nice to see the older generation online. Oh, that's lovely. Lovely. <laughs> what did you do for a living? I was a buyer. I work in the aircraft industry. Oh, okay. It was the old Lucas, I've changed the name now. I did my work experience there when I was at school. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I ended up joining the RAF. I was in the RAF. Was you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, my dad was in the RAF, so I followed him the night. Yeah. Just 20 minutes later, they arrive at hospital. Do I get out and walk? No. Yeah. Oh, we're going to take you in on here. Nah, you relax, you've earned it. Oh, blimey. Gordon Bennett. <laughs> Mick will be checked over by A&E doctors to establish what caused his sudden collapse today. So I hope Mick gets better. I do, he was a lovely bloke. He was in the RAF. Oh, yeah, I was waiting for that. And he met his partner online dating. Did he really? Never to offer it. She's 81. Clear that. Fair play to her. I still hope. Yeah. To anyone. Where's the worst place you've been to the toilet on a job? I can hold it for 12 hours, no problem, so... <laughs> Just important to know that. And at my age, all you do is categorise yourself anyway, you know. Just put a leg bag on, yeah, pff, totally fine. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm there. very selective about where I go to the toilet. I know some colleagues have, have gone in the um, the shiwi that we carry. Have I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've not experienced that yet. See, I don't care. I just. I mean, you just hold it in, don't you? Yeah. But I have used the thing in the back of the ambulance. Yeah. Because a woman wouldn't let me wee in her house. And you know me, I need to go a lot. Yeah. We're going on holiday this year. We're off to Crete in October. Oh, lovely! But next year we want to drive around Scotland. Yeah. Uh, someone said about driving around the Highlands and stuff. Do not go for a poo in the bushes because you'll come back out with very large swollen bits because they'll just nibble on you. Mm -mm. Okay. It's 9.50 in the morning. 999 road, activated. Trouble 49. Grant Porter and Lewis Prosser are three hours into their shift when they get a call. Can I just confirm you're mobile, over? I'm trying to be. Let's confirm we are mobile controlled, but uh, we've had nothing come through in the AVL. We are heading in the direction of Stower Bridge, over. No problem, I'll be sending it to you. Hey. Uh, Concerned the 60-year-old man could be in a bad way, Grant and Lewis are at the garage where the patient Richard works within minutes. Let's close this door again. Right there, Car salesman the Richard had a serious heart attack three years ago. Now he suffers from angina. Woke up this morning um, with a pain cool. just here. Just in the centre of your chest, is it? Yeah, just to the to the left of centre. So, Richard, where, where is it exactly? Can you, is it, here. Is it right in that area? Yeah. It's, not, it's not the whole place, it's no, just it's really not, specific? No, over this side. It is just on this area here. Oh, OK. Yeah. And does it feel like angina? Um, no. No, I, I don't really know. What? Yeah, the sort of difference. But You've had this done before. Your yeah. arm was straight out. <laughs> oh, I've, I've unfortunately, um, you guys have been to see me a fair few times. Angina can be a precursor to a heart attack. 
both conditions are due to not enough blood getting to the heart. With angina, the blood supply is restricted, but with a heart attack, the blood can't get through at all. How would you, um, how would you rate the pain, Richard? Zero to ten? Uh, probably, probably a seven. Probably a seven, is it? Today's chest pain is the worst Richard's experienced since his heart attack, which is a concern for Grant and Lewis. When it happened at home, I had no idea it was a heart attack. I just thought I was very uncomfortable. That was going ten. It was really like somebody was jumping up and down on my chest by the time yeah. I got there. We know this is, this is less intense. Yeah. But the last time he had a heart attack, he didn't know it was a heart attack at the time. No, but the uncomfortable part of it was I wouldn't have been able to, I wouldn't be sitting here. I've been curled up on a bed trying to find a comfortable yeah. position. Yeah, it sounds really to, to, to find, to say, why is this pain not going away, sort of thing. Chest pain, you're always going to be thinking of the heart first. That's, I think that's the main priority, is, is ruling anything cardiac out. Heart attacks and angina are very similar kind of pain, and people who suffer angina a lot of the time will go, oh, it's only my angina. Then we get there and it's a full-blown heart attack and it's, it's getting more serious by the minute. So, so you've been coughing recently, Richard. How long Not was this? recently. I've been doing it from... I'm, in fact, I'm seeing a doctor about it because it yeah. hurts. So, but that's been going on since before Christmas. Richard's ECG isn't showing anything out of the ordinary. But with his pain not subsiding, he'll need further tests to confirm he's not having a heart attack. Because it's chest pain. As we say, the, the tests we've done are fairly limited compared to what they can do up there. They can do blood tests, yeah. see what's going on, do something a little bit more in-depth, and if nothing else, just peace of mind. The ambulance crew don't want to put additional strain on Richard's heart by making him walk to the ambulance. Keep yourself comfortable, arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Richard's wife and two children will meet him at hospital. I don't think my father will drive anything other than a Scorden anymore. He loves them. I love ones, just too pricey for me. The ones I want anyway. <laughs> now Richard is safely inside, Lewis can address his pain. Oh, I tell you what I do have every day, Cocodamol. Cocodamol. I don't know if that makes any difference, but I have that. When was the last time you had it? Um... Probably about 7.30 to 8 o'clock this morning. About oh, 7.30, is it? Mm. Oh, okay, okay. Well, it's just gone 20 to 11 now, so it's less than four hours, so we won't be able to give you any policy. Okay, tomorrow. just no, so I, I forgot about that. It's another no, one. No, I'm glad that, you mentioned but... it. Right, do you want me to think we can get going now? Your angina. Does that come on when you move, or does it come on as and when? Do you know what? I don't, I, I, I'm not quite sure. I think I've been told this, this angina is what I'm left with. Mm. You know? Yeah. Uh, this is something un, very... Un, it's unusual for me to get it like I've had this morning, if that's what this is. Yeah. Uh, I don't normally get it as anything... Well, nothing that would disturb me to the point of wanting to call 111 to find out. You've got chest pain, you've got a history, he should always call because we don't know if it's something new. And it's like the angina pain. You could go, oh, well, it's my normal pain, it's my normal pain. And four hours time, you're having a massive heart attack and you've left it for four hours and it's getting worse and worse. Richard is anxious to get back to work at his garage as soon as he can. But only after he's been thoroughly checked over at the hospital. There's a man who looks like he works too hard. I used to work at the subway in Merry Hill. Yeah. Oh, it was awesome. I used to do it while I was at like, college, so after college, I'd catch the bus back from Howl Zoe. And, uh, what were you studying in college? Ah, believe it or not, drama. You wouldn't, I'm so reserved, you wouldn't believe it, really. <laughs> uh, you do realise I know you. Yeah, quite well. <laughs> Three years this year, we've known each other. It's scary, really. It is, isn't it? You poor thing. That was when, like, 
minimum wage for an under 18 year old was like £3.85 an hour. I used to earn. Crikey. I used to get free subways though, so you can't moan at that, can you? Yeah. It's probably why I'm so fat now. <laughs> Perks of the job. Perks of the job. <laughs> Paramedics Hannah Meredith and Aaron Campbell are on shift together. That's a very fast cat. What a cat. Yeah. They've just been called to their next emergency. Uh, we're going to an un unknown female with breathing difficulties, suspected heart attack, call for a GP. As they arrive, further information comes through. Brendan. Oh, diabetics. Oh, there we go, with the door open then. Brenda's husband, Leslie, is waiting for them. Evening. Graduate, No, that's OK. She's in there. All right, is it Brenda, is it? Yeah. All right. Hello. Hello. Brenda, why are we here tonight? What's the problem? It's a coma. Coma? I know. Let's have your finger. So, have you spoken to the doctor tonight? It's, is it, is it there? The doctor is. No, it's Alf. Alf. Is that? Yeah, Alf's out there. Have you? Yeah. Has Alf spoken to the doctor? Oh, doctor's Mars Mars special. Doctor is. Oh, oh I see. Have your arm, sweetheart. <laughs> Give me your arm. So, do you feel unwell at the minute? Yeah. No, are you Alf? Les. Les. Oh. Who's Alf? Sorry. Who's Alf? Oh, okay. oh, okay. As well as living with dementia, Brenda has had two strokes in the last couple of years, leaving her unable to walk. <laughs> Les, what's happened tonight? Well, she's been all right all day. Mm-hmm. She's been great. Yeah. yeah the, the care has come to get her out and dress for, for bed. Mm-hmm. About tea time. I've had five minutes with her. Yeah. And all of a sudden, she said, Les, Les, come on down. And she was... And trouble breathing. Okay. You what? Panic. Well, I've been here before. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I recognised you. Yeah. <laughs> and you. Yeah, you, yeah, you recognise me as well. Yeah. <laughs> we should be able to tell you if she was in any pain. Yeah, she said she wasn't in any pain. No pain. Her breathing was very shallow. I'm going to put yeah. some stickers on your chest, sweetheart. Was she still able to speak to you while she was oh, yeah. panicking? Yeah. yeah. Didn't turn a funny colour or Sorry, anything sweet, like that? my hands are cold. Pale. A bit pale. OK. How old is she? 87. Yeah. You don't look a day over 86 and a half? Uh-huh. <laughs> Two years older than me. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, you're the toy boy, are you? You just keep nice and still for me. Brenda and Les have been married for 11 years and both have children and grandchildren from previous marriages. My knees have started to creep with agony. We wouldn't believe I spent 18 years in the Air Force as a drill instructor. Yeah. On the train ground all day. That probably what's done it. <laughs> her blood sugar's normal. I'm just looking at what it normally is. It varies a little bit, but her blood sugar's fine. So how are we feeling now, Brenda? <sighs> like that, eh? Everything is uh, is checking out okay. Um, all, um, all Brenda's numbers are fine. I think what might happen is with the with the dementia and things, sometimes they have a little panic with themselves. Because you imagine it could be scary, you just suddenly realise that, oh, hang on, I don't know where I am. So she's called out for you. When people panic, they breathe quickly. OK. Yeah, obviously, she's back to normal now. Yeah, I think she's back to normal now. Yeah. She's got a colour back. And... Yeah, and I mean, she's talking away to me when we came in and things. Yeah. Um, weren't you having a good old chat? You say old chat. <laughs> I said we were having a good old chat. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'm perfectly happy with her at the minute, Les, to be honest. We're getting old and decrepit, that's the trouble. <laughs> Comes to us all. 
Unavoidable. Les, I'll get you to sign this, and then we'll get out of your hair. All right. Thank you, Doke. Brenda, lovely to see you again. Yeah. Keep smiling. I keep smiling. Ah. You're feeling better now. Yeah. Not better. You look after yourself. Yeah. All right. All right, lads, nice to see you, my friend. All right. Have you ever been to Brenda before? I haven't, I haven't. I've been there a couple of times. She made a lot more sense last time I seen her. Mm. Yeah, dementia's. A bit of a decline in dementia. Yeah, dementia's always got obviously got worse. But she's one of those people that's got dementia and seems perfectly happy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Even though she might not know what's going on, she seems like That's you know, nice though, isn't it? I hate yeah. seeing people with dementia who are just really frustrated and, and agitated all the or time. Scared. It's probably horrible. Scared is the worst one because there's mm. not they they're like that, you know, and it gets worse. But no, she seems perfectly happy sat her uh, her electric recliner. She does. In Dudley, it's nearly home time for crewmates Joe Wilson and Hannah Potter. 999 mode activated. But before they can clock off, someone else needs their help. All right, we're going to the 77-year-old female who's vomited dry blood. Vomiting dry blood? I'm going to vomit dry blood. It's just like <sighs> dust coming out. That's sad. <laughs> The patient lives just minutes away. Hello, is it Joan? Hello, sweetheart, you all right? How are we doing? OK. We were only well, down the road. We aim to please, Joan. How are you, my darling? I went to the GP about three weeks ago now. Okay. With pains across here. Yeah. I had these pains for about three or four days. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Sorry, he's going to come back to haunt me, I think. <laughs> uh, I'm going to hand some man in the room. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I was getting I've jealous. Been, I've been yeah. 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 And uh, anyway, she wasn't sure that I got a ulcer or a hernia. She's arranged me to have the camera going down, which yeah. is the point which comes through today. Yeah for Wednesday. Oh, okay. that's good. But now she gave me some medication to, like, a peppermint stuff. OK. So I've been getting a lot of heartburn. Yeah. So I took some tonight, though. Yeah. And then afterwards, I was... I wasn't violently sick. I, I took a picture of it. Let's have a look. Oh. What have you eaten uh, today? Today, all I've had is... Um, uh, some soup and some toast. And is that what you found trouble on? Because you were concerned about I'm concerned that vomiting. About that, yes. Yeah. Um, Have you still got the abdominal pain now? No, or... no, no. Pain down here. Burning sensation going right the way around here. Right. Let's take some observations on you. Let's see how you are as a, as a whole. Um, Just have a sit down on the bed, and we'll. Uh, yeah, get yourself comfy, my darling. Check over. And how many times were you, did you vomit, my darling, when uh, you did vomit? Just the once. Just the once. How long ago was it that you vomited? Probably about half an hour ago. Do you feel sick now, or...? No. No, and it... I, I'm telling you, honestly, I've had all my pregnancies, I've had four children, I've never ever been sick. Really? Did you have the pep tuck before? After I'd taken that, this when about ten minutes after that, I was here. Oh, you might have disagreed a bit with you then, my darling. I think you need to pop back to the doctors to get something a bit different then. How long have you been putting up with the heartburn for? I've had it for the last couple of years, haven't I? Really? It seems to happen when I lay down. Yeah, it does sound a bit like a stomach ulcer. Especially if you're lying flat, we always get heartburn and indigestion worse when we lie down. Just because, obviously, the, the acids in the stomach, you know, you've got a big bag with the tubes at the top. And when you lie flat, flat yeah, you can't it, it's the, the acid yeah. can come up. The, up. Yeah. How are you going to cope now with the indigestion? Just leave it. Uh, do you drink milk at all? Yes, I do. Yeah, but it helps to settle the stomach a bit, doesn't it, milk? Hannah and Joe are satisfied that Joan has just had a bad reaction to her new medication and doesn't need to be taken to hospital. No, not at all. Not at all. 
Right, if I just get you to sign this, Joan, and we'll leave you uh, to try and get some rest. I'd give your GP a call, and hopefully they'll find out what's causing all this. Just have a signature anywhere on that white bit. Let's grab our stuff. Have. Right, we'll leave you to um, to get some rest. Fair pleasure, a sweetheart. Thank you very mm. much. Well, you take care, Joan. It was a pleasure to meet you, sweetheart. A pleasant, well spoken lady, wasn't she? Jody, who had two fits while she was at college, went back home the same day. However, she was completely exhausted by the episode and still has a couple of fits every month. But she's just come back from her first ever girls' holiday to Spain and can't wait for the next one. After suffering a severe asthma attack, little Elishba was given another nebulizer and steroids at hospital to help her breathe. She was kept in overnight, but was allowed home the next day, just in time to celebrate her third birthday. Her mum, Shazia, has since changed the milk Elishba drinks and her asthma has really improved. A&E staff couldn't find anything wrong with 78-year-old Mick. He was kept in hospital for a few hours and then allowed home. Doctors put his collapse down to sunstroke as it was a very hot day. Mick's now back in good health and he's just returned with his girlfriend Shirley from a holiday on the Isle of Wight. Car salesman Richard was given the all-clear following observations at hospital. He wasn't suffering from a heart attack and returned to work the next day. He's also managed to take some time off and recently returned from a family break in Cornwall. Joan had her endoscopy. It turns out she did have a stomach ulcer and a hiatus hernia. On her doctor's advice, Joan changed her diet. Her stomach ulcer has now shrunk and her indigestion problems have thankfully gone away. Home time. Home time. Thank you. No, thank you, mate.